Hi everyone, welcome back to All Access Arcade. Today we're going to be checking out the demo of Tavern Talk. This game is described by the developers as Coffee Talk meets Dungeons and Dragons. It is a cozy visual novel game where you play as the innkeeper of a kind of Dungeons and Dragons themed tavern slash inn. So let's go ahead and get started and see what it has to offer. So right off the bat, you do get to choose your pronouns. I'm assuming the characters are going to refer to you in some way. I will stick with the default she, her, and get started. Act one, the Wayfarer is in. So far, I'm really loving the art style. Very nice designs. So I'm assuming me is the innkeeper, the character that we are playing. And then Fable is our first patron. Let's hear about Fable's exciting day. Somehow I, I doubt it will be that exciting based on their demeanor. So even better than an adventure is a walk around the grove and replanting a fallen mushroom. All right, so looks like nothing that exciting happened to Fable. So we'll see where this goes. So walked around the grove, saw the same stones, the same trees, the same everything it seems like. My life is as exciting as a dried nut. At least they've come to terms with the fact that maybe the same thing every day isn't that exciting, but oh no! But Fable is tearing up and looks so sad about it. I agree, nuts uh, are very thrilling in sauces. There are some very great Italian-based uh, nut sauces that they put on pasta. I will back the innkeep on this statement. The innkeep seems very knowledgeable about different types of nuts. <laughs> oh, but people's awake. Too bad. Okay. Something riveting in Fable in Fable's life. I feel like this is going to kind of lead us into maybe our first uh, quest or something like that. Let's see where it goes. Oh, you're missing the spice. There's a lot of food analogies in this so far. It hasn't been that long, but they're leaning very heavily into the food analogies. <laughs> I don't think chilies would help me much. I mean, that would make your food more exciting at least. Spice in your life. <laughs> I like Fable's uh, facial expressions. Very expressive character. Just a lot of salt. Oh, I'm like a bland soup, but sad. Let's see what else Fable has going on and what the innkeep has to say. Life isn't bad, but also not particularly funny. We've all been there. Oh, okay. So we've got our first uh, dialogue choice. So have you tried visiting a circus or have you tried adding some zest to your soup? I'm going to keep going with these food metaphors and say, have you tried adding some zest to your soup? Apparently caught Fable off guard. <laughs> Drama, buzz, excitement, something fiery. <laughs> okay, so drama includes going to the theater or a gala or arriving in a hot air balloon. I would say the last one is going to be the most dramatic. <laughs> it doesn't seem like Fable likes that idea, idea very much though, flying in a hot air balloon. I'm afraid of heights and people and actors. I mean, 
we all have our fears. <laughs> tried singing okay what is singing if not the telling of a tale i wonder if fable is a bard perhaps okay good question the green soup of routines we're really carrying through the food metaphor but you know what i'm okay with it everyone can relate to food So Fable looks after the forest in keeping with uh, what looks like to be an elf archetype character. Okay, like for example, let's see what Fable wants to do with their life. Okay, saving people, wandering through the marshes, meeting a pretty nymph, those all sound pretty exciting. Ooh, okay, another, another dialogue choice. A pretty nymph that's pretty daring, or that sounds like the opening to a grand adventure. Hmm. I'm interested to hear what Fable has to say about the nymph. So we're going to go with a pretty nymph that's pretty daring. That's the point. <laughs> So Fable again talking about singing, which again makes me wonder if they are a bard character. Hopefully that will be revealed. I'm really interested to know what class they are in this kind of D&D inspired world. The most exciting thing in my life is coming to your tavern and discovering new tricks. That is pretty exciting. Personally, I love checking out new cafes in my area and seeing what they have to offer. So there's nothing wrong with you know, discovering new drinks or beverages being an exciting part of your life. But it looks like Fable is really upset about this, and I want to see how uh, our innkeeper character can can help them overcome this. Not a lot of songs you can write about that. I'm not going to disagree. I can't think of many songs written about beverages, but. You know, if you if you know any, please feel free to drop some songs written about drinks in the comments and I will take a listen because I can't think of any off the top of my head, but that that just might be down to the genre of music that I prefer. I wouldn't mind a jingle. She can so Fable can write a jingle for the, the innkeeper to use advertising. I would love to hear that. Can I mention nymphs? <laughs> Maybe one day, Fable can also write jingles for the nymphs. Oh, here we go. In the meantime, can I offer you a drink? So it seems like we're probably going to get to the first major mechanic of the game, which is mixing drinks for patrons. Yes, I would love a drink. All right, perfect. The usual? Oh, man. I hope we don't have to guess what Fable's usual is. Ah, thank you. That means a sunny breeze, so we don't have to deduce from the few clues we have about Fable what their favorite drink is. So we need to make them a sunny breeze. All right. <laughs> All right, a little bit more nymph banter, and then but I mostly want a sunny breeze. So now it seems like we're going to get on with the drink making. Though, maybe I was wrong. What does Fable have to say about their drink? I was wondering. Ah, I don't know any. Okay, so Fable's just interested in how the drinks are made, not necessarily in uh, being a backseat bartender and telling us how to do our job. Could you show me? Yes, tutorial. Thank you very much. Definitely need that. Let's go straight for the tutorial. Do I need to put on an apron or summon a familiar? I, I don't know how to summon a familiar and I doubt that's an essential component in drink making, but I could be wrong. We're about to find out. All right, welcome to the drink mixing nook. So it looks like we've got cute little creature over here, I'm assuming, named Andu, based on the writing on 
this bucket that it's in. So let's just continue on and see what the innkeeper has to say about mixing drinks. So this is what it looks like back here. Okay, really organized, very clean. Oh, Andu. So I'm assuming Fable is addressing this cute little creature in the Andu bucket that I already pointed out. I'm interested to see how it comes into play in drink making. Oh, I haven't fed him yet. A little bit ominous. Good question, where do we start? I start by figuring out what my patrons want. So we know in this case that Fable wants a sunny breeze. I take notes in my journal. I'm assuming the journal is gonna be this blue, kind of tealish book icon in the bottom right corner. Let's have a look. All right, so the journal has been opened, which, and we've got this order up here in the upper left corner. It looks like there's a, a wing with three up arrows next to it. So let's go ahead and take a look through the journal really quick. Or not yet, because there's still text going, so we can't look through it yet. Uh, if I want to look for specifics, I check my detailed notes. Okay, when I'm sure what I know what was asked of me, I browse my recipes. Can't just freehand mix something to see what sticks? No. Okay, so no, no free mixing allowed here. The right balance is crucial, so I stick to my recipes. That's good to know. Okay, when I have settled on one, I can use the chalk to draw it on the board. So in the bottom right of the book, we see this draw recipe uh, chalk button. What if you pick the wrong one? That's a very good question. What if we do accidentally pick the wrong recipe? I can either erase it with the sponge or pick a different recipe. All right, so we're not committed once we've cho chosen the recipe, which is good to know in case we decide to go with something different. My ingredients are stored in the five bottles on the right. So these fancy kind of perfume looking bottles are apparently drink ingredients. Very nice. There is dexterity, intelligence, defense, strength, and charisma. So we've got five different skills commonly associated with RPGs that are represented by these five bottles. Hmm. Dexterity, intelligence, defense, strength, and charisma. I'm going to say this red bottle here in the bottom left might be for strength because it looks like it's got a little sword hilt sticking out of the top. So I'm going to put my guess on that one for strength, but the other three I'm not a hundred for the other three. I can't count the other four. I'm not a hundred percent sure on, but I'm going to guess this reddish bottom left one might be strength based on the, the bottle design, but we'll see. I think dexterity sounds the tastiest. I'm interested to know what the different skills taste like, honestly. Um, I'd never thought about ascribing a flavor to dexterity. If I mess up or want to redo my drink for any other reason, I can simply feed my mistakes to Andu. Okay, so Andu over here is our little garbage disposal if we make a mistake. Once I'm done, I press the bell to activate the primordial vortex. Oh, okay, that's intense. Just for making some drinks, a primordial vortex. We'll see how that works once we're done. Actually, I don't need to bore you with the magic details. Okay, so we're gonna try making a drink now. All right, so we're gonna open the journal to look at the recipes. So the order up here is Fables order with, again, with the wing with the three up arrows. And we'll, now we'll take a look through the journal. Uh, so we've got rumors, which are blank. Quests, also blank. Log. So this keeps a log of the dialogue that was happening in case we need to go back and review anything. Then this, uh, this tab has the drink recipes. We've got our ingredients. Ah, here we go. So it shows the five ingredients and their associated stats. So let's take a look at this. So the first one is Ignis. Rumor has it that this spicy potion can make a warrior out of everyone, even the most weak scholars, and it is for strength. So as suspected, this red one is for strength. Um, apparently strength tastes spicy. Cantio, created by mixing honey with classified magic, this ingredient strengthens your charisma. So the second one strengthens charisma and it is honey and magic. Uh, I, knew, I know what honey tastes like, I'm not sure what magic tastes like, So, but this seems like it's gonna be a sweet tasting skill. 
Luma, this ingredient enhances your finesse and reflexes. With its help, adventures will become quicker, faster, stronger. Well, not the last one, but more agile for sure. The feathery bottle design may or may not add to the flavor. Hmm. So Pluma is for dexterity, but there's no specific flavor ascribed to this one like there was with the first two. Let's check the next one. Tempest. This mystic potion is a must-have for every self-respecting tavern. Looks like it will boost your intelligence. Uh, its origin is unknown, but many scholars and wizards favor it. So this one is for intelligence, and again, no specific flavor here on Tempest. And then the last one is Frigus. Hailing from the highlands, this ingredient raises your defenses and protects you against any harm coming your way. No matter how tough it is, this potion will make you tougher. And it even tastes pretty good. So we know Frigus tastes good, but we don't know what it tastes like, and it will increase defense. So interestingly, only Ignis and Cantio had some specific flavors attached. Uh, the strength potion Ignis was spicy, and then Cantio, the charisma potion, is made with honey. So Again, I'm still pretty curious to know what the other three skills will taste like. You know, maybe the characters will give us some more details on the flavors of the drinks. And then this last tab is infusions, which it looks like we haven't unlocked yet. So we're gonna go back to the recipes. We need to find something with uh, dexterity. No, we don't. We need to just find the Sunny Breers recipe because that's what Fable wants, which is a high dexterity recipe. And it looks like it also increases uh, strength and defense slightly. Let's check the description on here. Sunny Breeze. The delicious Sunny Breeze will fasten your reflexes while adding a small boost to your grip strength and defenses. It tastes like a pleasant wind flowing through the woods on a warm summer day. Currently on trial version 568. Needs more input from rangers and bards. So rangers and bards. That again makes me wonder if Fable is a bard style character. Hopefully that's a revealed a little bit later in this playthrough, but we'll see. So we know this is the recipe we need to make for Fable because it's what they requested. So I'm going to click on the chalk here that says draw recipe and throw it up on the chalkboard. So it has max dexterity and a little bit of strength and defense. So this star image on the chalkboard matches this purple wheel over here on the left. So I think we need to add ingredients so to the cup here in the center to make the purple wheel match the chalkboard. But we'll see. We know we need dexterity, which was this greenish bottle. So I'm going to pick it up and in pour some in, we need to get it to go all the way up to there. All right, there we go. So you can see now dexterity has reached the maximum level and matches the Sunny Breeze recipe. So now we're gonna add some strength, which was the red bottle. And you can see when you mouse over the bottle, the associated skill comes up on the, the purple coaster, kind of on the left-hand side of the screen. So that way you know which potion you're using. So it kind of helps you out so you don't have to remember. So we're gonna throw in a little bit of strength. Oops. All right, so, and we also need defense, but it looks like my pitcher is full. I can't add anything else. So we're gonna go ahead and give this to Andu. Pour out a little bit. I'm gonna pour out that much. All right, so let's kind of go back to the drawing board. We need to put a little bit more dexterity and maybe just one more level to there. So dexterity is full. And now I need to add a little bit of strength and defense. So we'll add one pour of strength and then hopefully defense will fill it up to the top and we'll be good to go. All right, there we go. Andu has held up a sign that says sunny breeze. So we're good. Now let's send it through the primordial void with our bell and see what happens. Bing. And there we go. It appears on the bar top right in front of people. Wow, it actually does teleport. <laughs> I thought you were just very good at sleight of hand. Now there's a little magic at work here. Fable finds it delicious. Well, I feel like we made it together. Oh, you know. <laughs> All right, I'm glad we went through the tutorial because we're probably gonna have to make a couple more drinks. We'll see if any other patrons decide to show up. Now 
now we're kind of probing a little bit into what Fable wants for their life, the adventures they dream of. Ooh, taking a little bit of an existential turn though. Aren't you scared they'd be the end of you? Let's see how Fable responds. Yeah, that's fair. How would I know if I never tried? One, okay, so Fable wants to try, but there's always a but. Never mind. Oh, what is Fable not telling us? And they're so upset again. They've teared up a lot. Oh, hello, spooky newcomer. Okay. Mm-hmm. A drink. A drink at a tavern. <laughs> Drinkable. How vague. In Inkeep agrees with this assessment. <laughs> I like how the inkeep apparently is a little bit sarcastic, kind of snarky, very specific, thank you. It might just be how I'm reading it though. They could have been very kind in their delivery of that line and I'm just making it sound more sarcastic in my head. All right, so Spooky Stranger is on a way to a fight to pay some debts. Give me something that will boost my defense, okay? So I can claim victory. All right, so we need to look for a defense boosting drink for this spooky stranger. All right, so it takes us automatically back to the drink making screen when we need to make a drink for someone. So let's look at the journal. So our order is up here in the upper left. We need a defense up drink. So we know it's not going to be Sunny Breeze because we just made that for Fable and that is a dexterity drink. So let's take a look at our other recipe. So Last Whisper is another dexterity based drink. We're going to skip over Sunny Breeze because we know what it is. Uh, Sailor's Courage, we've got a little bit of defense in there but mostly strength. Uh, Steel Tonic, that's got a lot of defense. Peaks Sunrise has got, okay, some defense but mostly charisma. And then finally, we've got Frosted Lagoon with Strength and Intellect. So I think Steel Tonic's gonna be our best bet because it's the only one that maxes out defense. With the Steel Tonic running through your veins, you can become the buff, charming tank of your dreams. Its cooling qualities mixed with a surprisingly spicy aroma boost your vitality to new heights and leave you impenetrable to damage. It's almost perfect. Almost. Well, it's got high defense and it also says it will leave you virtually impenetrable to damage, which is great because this spooky stranger is going into a fight, it sounds like. So we'll go ahead and go with Steel Tonic. So we're going to start by putting in a base of the defense potion, which is this bottom right blue bottle. So let's do three cords of defense. Perfect, so we filled that up. We also need some strength and a little bit of, hmm, a little bit of dexterity it looks like. So we'll go with strength. No, not dexterity. It looks like we're doing strength and charisma on this one. Oh, we got, so we got strength right there. So strength, we're looking pretty good. We're gonna try the charisma potion next to make this the right uh, shape to match the chalkboard. There we go, Steel Tonic Andu has confirmed for us that our recipe was correct, so let's ring the bell and send it through the Primordial Vortex. Hopefully, Spooky Stranger will be happy with this drink. This should taste like victory. Oh, at least they said thank you, that's very kind of them. I'm interested on their feedback of the actual beverage. Must wash us away the memories of the banshee haunting the lonesome lagoon. Their bone shattering song of sorrow. So nothing, uh, nothing about the drink itself. Ooh, rumor unlocked song of bones and water. Mm, that's interesting. I wonder if that's part of the quest giving mechanic that will probably come into play a little bit later. Enough to kick some ass at least. So, okay. All right, and off they go. So we've been making these drinks for our two patrons and they boost stats, but it's never been clearly identified whether or not these beverages are alcoholic in nature or not. I mean, I would kind of 
assume so because this is like a tavern but at the same time that's probably not something that you would want to be drinking before going into battle so i wonder if these are just like special magically infused beverage drink potion i don't know i'm not a bartender or an innkeep or a tavern keeper i don't know the, the technical terms but i wonder if they're just like specially infused uh potions that you are imbibing All right, Fable, back to you. Let's see what you have to say about your unexciting life that you wish was filled with adventure. Not thinking about anything. Don't believe it for a second. Other people seem to have the courage to follow theirs, their dreams. Why can't I be like that? that up to you though the innkeeper is very wise brother okay so fable has a brother but i'm running away from where i belong oh let's let's see what fable's brother said oh we are rangers fable we belong to the woods like the stream that patters down the mountain so fable is a ranger class not a bard i assumed bard because they kept talking about singing but Maybe they're just a ranger that also likes to sing. Nothing wrong with that. We keep the balance. It's what we're meant to do. So these are Fable's brother's words. Sounds like he, he's very much about the duty that they have to their forest. Yep, I want to experience things outside the forest is what Fable is saying. So, I want to live a life so full of adventure, boredom will feel like bliss. So it seems like Fable's storyline so far is a little bit of the uh, duty versus dream. This is what I have to do versus this is what I want to do. I'm interested to see where it goes. I want to sing songs about my adventures that make other people yearn for the same freedom. I wonder if this will eventually uh, mean Fable's going to reclass as a bard. Or like I said, maybe just a ranger that likes to sing. Uh, the Ashen Grove. That must be the forest where Fable and their brother live. There's nothing wrong with going away from time to time. It's true. Oh, poor Fable. So sad. What if destiny never meant for me to leave? What if it did? This innkeeper is very wise. I like the, the writing behind the innkeeper so far. Be your own genie, Fable. Good advice. <laughs> you really are the most exciting part of my day. Alright, I wonder if we're going to get any other patrons. <gasps> oh, we are. A surprise new patron here. Who seems a bit gruff based on the hmph introduction. But we'll see. We could be surprised. All right, my name's Kaylin. You can call me Kit or Lynn. Couldn't care less. Slight. I wonder if that's a play on words there. All right, so let's see what this uh, newcomer has to say. You do with the thing, with the quest, right? Again, very vague. Uh, so I feel like this might be leading into a tutorial for the quest mechanic. You can have a look at my notice board. It looks like in the background towards the left, there's kind of a bulletin board. I wonder if that's where the quests are posted. No. Oops. Apparently, Carolyn does not want to take a quest. They want to offer a quest. The innkeeper is being very patient here. Elaborate. Heard of a werewolf making trouble. Rumor unlocked. Werewolf mayhem. Alright, that was far south. Okay, so. Nomad. Oh, another rumor. Un rumor unlocked. Nomady. I thought the werewolf pipe died together with that one romance novel. 
<laughs> you mean the one with the vampires? Hmm, I think I might know the novel they're talking about. I think there were also some movies. But I'm sure they uh, wouldn't bring up movies in a fantasy tavern setting. That split society into two camps, team werewolf or team vampire. Which one were you in, Keep? Um, well, considering I think they're referencing the Twilight Saga, which I never read nor saw, I never picked a team, so we're just gonna go vampire and see what happens. <laughs> And Inkeep never tells. Well, good. Apparently, uh, Carolyn likes us, which is great. Oh, okay. Why? <laughs> hmm. So, Carolyn came and told us about a werewolf and isn't fan of werewolves because they're too close. I'm not super familiar with uh, like the Dungeons and Dragons beastie or anything, so I'm wondering what kind of race Carolyn is based on. Obviously not a werewolf. Okay, don't. So Carolyn doesn't want to take the werewolf quest, so that's why they brought the information to the Inky. So we can then post it up on the notice board for someone else to take care of. Oh, I'm just afraid he might look a little too familiar to my Uncle Dragon. Hmm, okay. So... Hunchback hair, crooked teeth. Hmm. So, Carolyn seems has good has good reason for not wanting to take on the task of werewolf hunting because uh, it would be an awkward family reunion. Fair point. But like I said, I feel like this is about to lead into our quest building mechanic. Anything else that might help others get done with it rather swiftly. So we might get another rumor. Fetch. They can keep as confused as I am. Should they get into a dangerous situation, they'll just have to start playing fetch. That works. I am as shocked as the innkeep. On any dog, trust me. I wonder if Carolyn is speaking from experience. I wonder if a fetch is also a pastime of their race. <laughs> Good to know. All right, rumor unlocked. Fetch. <laughs> Either Carolyn, Care, or Lent. Pick one. All right, so we get to pick what we're going to decide to call this character. We're going to go with Lynn. Is that a name or is it just Inky? Just Inky. We'll keep it at that. We're going to make a drink for Lynn. Let's see what they want. I'll take something powerful, so probably need something with a high strength. Yep, something with a whole lot of strength. Don't you dare give me any of that watered down muck. All right, so we definitely need to focus on a high strength drink. Here we are back in the drink making area. All right, so we know it's not steel tonic because that is high defense and we know sunny breeze is gonna be high dexterity. So let's double check the other four recipes we have to choose from. Uh, Last Whisper's got pretty high dexterity again. Uh, Sailor's Courage. That's got maximum strength. Maybe we'll go with that, but I'm going to check the other two. We've got Peak Sunrise. I'm not going to do it with the Charisma and Defense. And then Frost the Lagoon. It's mostly Intellect, so we're going to go Sailor's Courage for Lynn. I really like the design of this drink with like kind of the, the arm and six pack and the little ship sail instead of a Umbrella, it's, it's a fun design on that drink. So Sailor's Courage gives even the last land lover the qualities of a good sailor, a lot of strength, quick reflexes, a shot of defense, and the inability to know fear. Occasionally causes wobbly sea legs, but that is nothing to worry about. So this is what we're gonna go for. Put it up on the board, and we'll get started with our strength. Do, do, do. Gonna fill that up until it's at maximum. 
there we go. Maximum strength. We also need to put in a little bit of defense. There we go, that looks right. And then a little bit of dexterity. Oh, sailor's Courage, thank you, Andu. That is what we are going for, so let's send it off through our black hole. A drink with zero water as requested. I also like how this uh, Sailor's Courage glass kind of unintentionally matches Lynn's color scheme with the, with the gold and the reddish uh, theming going on. Hopefully they enjoy it. Okay, not bad. A glowing review. They said thanks, that was very kind. Through the Ashen Grove, oh, okay, so that's where Fable lives. Got some business to clean up. I wonder if Lynn and Fable are going to cross paths in the Ashen Grove. Hmm. Undead snails. Undead, okay. Rumor unlocked, snail's pace. The past haunts everyone willing to listen. Again, this innkeeper is very wise. Speaks with a lot of gravitas, I like it. Would you mind talking like a normal person? <laughs> This is, this is our tavern. We can speak how we like. All right, see you, Lynn. I'll be back for more work. All right, so maybe Lynn's gonna come back and take quests in the future. We'll see. Speaking of rumors, you know how to turn them into proper quests, right? Ah, this should be our tutorial section, I'm hoping, because I have no idea. There we go. I could use some help. Tutorial. Let's do it. Guess I got a few minutes. All right, so this is where I sort all the rumors I've collected. So we have collected some rumors about a werewolf, uh, about the banshee from the spooky stranger, and then uh, Lynn also mentioned something about undead snails. So, oh, I also keep them written down in my journal so I don't forget. I think the best next step would be sorting the fit and snippets onto your quest page. So it looks like we got the quest page over here on the right with three spots. Just drag them over and make sure they're all for the same quest. Otherwise, you'll end up confusing adventurers. We need to make sure the adventurers are very clear on what they're doing. We need to make sure they have good directions. Once you're done, select that quill of yours. We got a quill pen over here on the right of the new quest paper. So let's get to making a quest. All right, so now we're going to assemble a quest. So let's see, we've got five, five rumors here. A banshee is haunting the Lonesome Lagoon, wailing a song that will shatter your bones. Hopefully a rhetorical device. So we've got that over here. The Vukakin Carolyn, so I guess that's uh, Carolyn's race, Vukakin, told me about a werewolf who is roaming around Tregaren, a potential threat to villagers. The werewolf previously has been seen in Erobet, a southern town. A nomad, or do they have a goal in mind? A werewolf's secret weakness is playing fetch. Apparently no dog can resist the urge to run after a stick. And then finally, an unusual amount of undead seem to be haunting the north. Undead snails are being accused of stealing crops. This apparently poses a problem. And we've got like a little drawing over here in the bottom right corner of what the innkeeper thinks an undead snail might look like. All right, so we have got three squares over here to assemble our rumors. So. We've got three werewolf rumors over here. I'm assuming that's what we need to put together, but I'm just gonna pick three random ones so far. We're gonna pick the Banshee, a werewolf secret weakness, and the undead snails and see what happens. And the quill, the quill just flat out rejected that. So no go. We're just gonna drag all of the werewolf pieces of the puzzle over here, all of the werewolf rumors, and see what happens now. There we go, that worked. 
So now we have our quest page, a werewolf on detours. A reticent Vukakin passed by the Wayfarers Inn reporting a werewolf making their way up to Tregaren from Aroveth. They pose a potential threat to helpless villagers. Apparently werewolves love playing fetch. Are you brave enough to take on the quest and save Tregaren from this werewolf mayhem? And we've got the seal over here and it is just signed in key. So now we've got this quest up on our notice board. All right, seems to be the end of the day. We're feeding Andu, cleaning up the tavern, and calling it a night. It has been quite the day learning how to make drinks and assemble quests, so I'm sure that Inkeep is quite tired. All right, 58th of the week, act one at the Wayfarer's End, so. 58th, I'm assuming that's the day we're on. And we've got a image here on the left that shows the outside of the inn. I really like the design here. It's very cute, nicely drawn. And it's also just, it's got a lot of really fun details. We've got this dragon weather vane. We've got like a cute little cat dragon creature down here on the picnic table, some sheep grazing out front. So yeah, I really, I really like this illustration. I'm, I'm glad that it was put in here to show what the outside of the inn looks like. That's super cute. All right, let's get started on the 58th day of the week. See, and Fable is our first customer quest taken. Let's see what Fable has to say about this werewolf quest. What do you have there, Fable? We know, but we'll see a little, just a little bit of leading to see what Fable has to say. says a werewolf is terrorizing Tregaren. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have put it on the notice board. It is indeed. Hmm. Not yet. Seems like Fable might want to take this quest and start their adventure. What kind of hero are you looking for? One who knows their way around difficult terrain, woods even. Preferably one who is good with the bow. Hmm. Well, we know Fable lives in the forest, and that Fable is also a ranger, so it seems like they'd be pretty well suited to take on this quest. One that will tell me that they want the quest. I suppose that's paramount. Uh, above all other requirements for the quest, the adventurer has to want to take the quest. Yep, Fable is good with the bow, as deduced from their ranger class. Yes, Fable. I, again, the innkeep is so patient. And I know my way around in the woods. I know, Fable. <laughs> uh, Fable seems very unsure of themselves. Maybe I want the quest. Oh, okay, not just maybe. We did tell Fable yesterday to follow their heart, follow their dreams, maybe that Destiny wants them to leave the Ashen Grove. So today they come in and we've got this werewolf quest. That's the start of an adventure. Yep. So Fable's justifying why they should take this quest. And werewolves are basically just normal wolves, but slightly scarier because they are also human. I like Fable's framing of this. Uh, it's not the wolf part of werewolves that, sc that scare them. It is the human part of werewolves that scare them. And I mean, I can kind of see where they're coming from. <laughs> but you've talked to humans before. That's true. And you got silver arrows for your birthday last year and they were just collecting dust in your room. As every good adventurer knows, uh, silver is very effective against werewolves. And what else does Fable have to say? Okay. So we've already established no one's taken the quest and that Fable is probably a good fit to take down this werewolf. I didn't think that far. Relatable. Let's see. <laughs> or rather, I did. But then I thought, what if I take the quest? Then I have to go on the quest. That is, that's the problem with things sometimes is it seems like it's a great idea and then you realize you have to follow through on the idea and that's where the problem comes in. And I have to fight the werewolf or talk to the werewolf, which is worse. Again, I like Fable's framing here. Talking is worse than fighting, in their opinion. 
as someone that would rather struggle than, you know, ask for help in a shop or something, I can kind of relate. What if the werewolf doesn't like me? That's probably the least of your problems, Sable. I miss and shoot a tree instead, and then the tree will be mad at me. Uh, Fable seems like a people pleaser and who just wants everyone to like them. And again, that's a very relatable character trait. Um, but also if they're a, a ranger, a seemingly elf character that takes care of the forest. So I can see how they'd be really upset about shooting a tree by accident as well. But it won't really matter because I'll be dead. That took a dark turn. So maybe I should put the quest back. So we went from trying to justify why Fable should take the quest to uh, them talking themselves out of taking the quest because the werewolf might eat them. Fable, yes. So let's see. Uh, do you want me to tell you to take that quest? Maybe Fable's looking for someone to just make the decision for them. Maybe. Such a wise innkeep. I can't make that decision for you. <laughs> Neither can I. Whenever I have to make a difficult decision, I freeze in place. Decision paralysis is a real thing. Sometimes it's really hard to make decisions. And suddenly I am unable to move until someone makes the decision for me. So I see this uh, as a potential point of character growth for Fable, making their own decisions. Like a slime, a frozen slime, a frozen slime that can't move. <laughs> Out of all of the analogies that people could have made, I wasn't expecting a frozen slime. I've met slimes less anxious than you. I like how what Fable took out of this was you've met slimes, not calling them out for their for uh, their anxiety. The fact that the innkeep has met slimes. My tavern is open to everyone. What do slimes drink? So a few things here. So my tavern is open to everyone. So at first, what the innkeep said, oh, I've met slimes before. I automatically assumed they used to be an adventurer and met slimes out in the world somewhere. But my tavern is open to everyone implies that slimes have come to the tavern before. And I really also have the same question as Fable. What do slimes drink? Also, how do slimes drink? Do they use straws? Um, also, it looks like these are kind of bar stools. Is there special slime seating? Because I'm imagining kind of Dragon Quest type slimes. I, I don't know how they would get up on a bar stool. Is there off screen a special uh, seating area for creatures like slimes that couldn't reach the, the bar top? I have so many questions about slimes in taverns and I didn't even ever think about this previously. So hopefully the innkeep does have a satisfactory answer about what slimes drink, because I really want to know. Water, more slime, bones. Okay. You sell bones? Only to slimes. Now I know what slimes drink. Water, more slime, bones. And bones are reserved specifically for slimes. Uh, that took another dark turn. Maybe you can add my bones to your menu soon. Hmm. You'll just have to pick them up from the forest. Man table, just uh, having some catastrophe thinking here about what might happen. I think I would have a hard time convincing a werewolf to give up free bones. Why are you so anxious, Fable? A question I ask myself often. In general. So this seems to be a personality trait about taking the quest. I'm glad that the inky pen narrowed the focus of this. Seems to me that you want to take it, but you're trying to talk yourself out of it. That is also what it seems like to me, because Fable is trying to find the worst case scenario here. Okay, I do want to go on that quest. It would make a good start for a song. The prelude of an epic fable, the protector of the woods, the world, the worms. Very alliterative. Worms is an interesting choice. The worms, and keep agrees. They seem like they need protecting. Okay, that's fair. Maybe it was an intentional choice and not just for alliteration. The 
every time I think about embarking on a quest, all I can think about are the ways in which it could go wrong. Again, with the worst case scenario thinking. But it happens to everyone sometimes. Is there something making you feel like you might fail? <laughs> Aside from the bloodthirsty werewolf. I feel like that's a little unfair to the werewolf. We don't know that he's bloodthirsty. Oh, the innkeeper agrees. We don't know what it is thirsty for. It might prefer orange juice. It could be a juice thirsty werewolf. Fable's uh, face indicates they didn't even think of this possibility. Heroes have a history, right? Inspirational feats they can look back on to define their bravery. I have the opposite of that. Great mistakes and epic regrets. I wonder what these are. Like the Mary Morgan incident. For the reason why nobody wants to spend time with me. Oh, that's so sad. I would hang out with Fable. They seem really sweet. Ooh, another dialogue choice. The Mary Mo Morgan incident, or why does no one want to spend time with me? I'm interested in the Mary Morgan incident. Yes, the Mary Morgan incident. Didn't you hear of it? Nope. Pink spirit, where did it carry around? My very first adventure. Okay. What happened? We're about to find out, I believe. An adventuring party was on their way, passing through the Ashen Grove. As we know, the Ashen Grove is where Fable lives. They wanted guidance from a local ranger. A merchant up in Tregaren recommended me. Okay, so this adventuring party wanted some advice about Ashen Grove from Fable. They agreed to help and go on their first adventure. They were very nervous, not a shock. I really wanted to leave a good impression, but my bad luck got in the way of that. I don't know. How did it go wrong? Very curious to know. They... What happened? I felt their condescending looks on my back as I walked into the woods. Of course, I don't know whether they actually looked. <laughs> oh, no. So people were so nervous, they led this adventuring party astray in the Ashen Grove, and they passed out. Oof. I couldn't see well with the blood rushing in my ears and feeling dizzy, so for some stupid reason, I led them along a path no one should ever pass. Oh no. Past the riverbanks of the Shiver Mirror, home to the Mary Morgan. You know of the Mary Morgan? Yes, the wrathful spirit that is known to drown men. Okay, so this does seem like a problem. Not sure if she really differentiates between genders, though. So everyone seems to be in danger from the Mary Morgan, and Fable led this group of adventurers right past their home because they were so nervous. Rumor unlocked the Mary Morgan. For some stupid reason, I put them right into her arms. I got scared, and in the end... Uh-oh. They had to save me. They fought the creature, and we finally failed. found a way out when John broke. Okay, so at least it has a... I don't want to say happy ending, but at least it has an ending where everyone survived. I couldn't look at them for the rest of the journey. Oh, poor Fable. They were so worried about what could go wrong that it was it was almost a worst case scenario where the adventuring party got into a fight with this uh, wrathful creature that drowns men and possibly women. I was too embarrassed to speak. I'm sure I'm still there laughing so at every gathering. Ah, it's okay, Fable. You can do it. To be, okay, it could have been worse. Let's hear how. I could have led them into I was a wyvern chimera residing in the quag mangrove. Okay, that's that does sound worse. Rumor unlocked three-headed beast. You seem to be very insecure. I think that's the biggest problem. How can I not be all I ever do is fail? Poor Fable. Fable seems like they really need a hug. You've done many wonderful things, and the future has yet to be written. It's true. I don't think anyone wants to read my story. But I would, personally, I am very much looking forward to hearing about your heroic battles. Yeah, 
man, this innkeeper's great. I really want to go hang out at this tavern. So you think I should go on to that quest? So, so now back to the werewolf quest. That's what started this whole uh, story time with Fable about the Mary Morgan incident. I will probably just make it worse. You can do it, Fable. I believe in you. Inky believes in you. Your absence will not make it better. It's true. All we do know is that without you, there will be one less person helping me. Yeah, is this person an innkeeper or a therapist? They're great. Someone has to help those people. It could be you, Fable. What if I do make it worse? What if you make it better? So what if you make a mistake in the middle or someone else comes along to give you a hand? Four hands are better than two. It's true. You might even end up joining a party. I love, I love this. Perfect heroes do not exist. Just ones that try. I feel like Inkeep is gonna be able to create advice here. And they should try terrifying. At least that means they are trying. That is sound advice for most things in life, not just going uh, werewolf hunting. No matter what, you should try terrify because that means you're trying instead of running away. Great advice. <laughs> I think I only run because I'm better at it. Maybe I should not decide to walk away before I even tried the other path. Aw, uh, Fable looks so happy now. And in case of emergency, better heroes can save me again. First, I'm going to save all the villagers. Great, Fable, I am glad that you've made this decision for yourself. So at least some of us don't have to be afraid anymore. No werewolf shall stand a chance against me. All right, Fable looks very pleased with this decision that they finally come to. We'll probably have to make them a drink before they go out on this adventure, so I wonder what we'll be making them. Here we go. Before you go, would you like a drink to aid you on your journey? Yes, please. Let's see what they want. I even got new infusions in this morning, so I am well prepared to help. We saw an infusion tab in the journal when we were checking it out earlier, so I'm interested to see how infusions will affect the drink recipes. What do you have? I've got some Thunder Sage, which is said to enchant words, so I wonder if that might help with uh, Charisma. With its magic, you should be able to inspire others and boost their abilities through your support. And then I have a couple Golden Feathers. They are extremely rare, but once in your possession, they can grant you haste. Okay. Briefly. <laughs> the expiration date is a bit unpredictable. How did you get those? Sure luck. All right, so considering all of that, let's see what Fable wants us to make them. Do you have something that can make me more nimble and quiet so that the werewolf won't see me coming? Something with a lot of dexterity. If I want to fight it, I'm going to need that surprise round advantage, so maybe haste would be helpful too. So it sounds like Fable is looking for something with the golden feathers for the haste advantage and also a dexterity trait. Oh, or maybe there's another option. Something that can help me with diplomacy. Okay, so it looks like we might have a fight option or a talk it out option. Perhaps it is just a hungry lost lichen after all and it needs a pep talk and a hug. Maybe we can even be friends. So uh, the Thunder Sage was said to enchant words. So it seems like we're gonna have the option to go with the Golden Feather or Haste so people can fight the werewolf or maybe the Thunder Sage, so Fable can talk to the werewolf diplomatically. But I would need something with a lot of charisma. As anticipated, Thunder Sage has something to do with charisma and some additional inspiration. 
I will leave the choice up to you. Ooh, so we get to choose if Fable is going to fight the werewolf or if they are going to talk to the werewolf and give it a big ol' hug. Just make sure you don't pick a random recipe. Please keep it to one of the abilities I asked for. Fable, we've been running this tavern for a long time. We got this. Have we ever led you astray? Remember, your choice can influence my fate. It could change the entire outcome of this quest. <laughs> Sorry for the backseat mixing. At least Fable realized what they were doing there. I appreciate the guidance, though. All right, back to our mixing area. Now that I have access to infusions, I have to be careful of how they interact with other ingredients. All right, so it sounds like infusions might change our recipes a little bit. They might alter the drink in a different way where I have to use different ingredients than usual. I should make sure to keep an eye on the coaster shape so that I can mix the correct recipes. The coaster shape is our purple circle over here where we track our drink recipes while we're mixing them. It does sound like these new infusions will alter the recipes a bit, so let's get to it. Maybe I should even try adding an infusion first and adjust the drink from there. Okay, so a good bit of advice. Let's open the journal. So we've got our two orders up here that Fable wants us to choose from. We want high dex with what appears to be um, haste, or we want high charisma with what is probably inspiration. So infusions was this final tab over here on the right. So we've got the thunder sage and the golden feather. So thunder sage gives double defense, but it takes down your intellect, it looks like. Thunder Sage has invigorating, inspiring properties. It was synthetically created by mages from the Harbor City, Zophor. It, and its effect is Inspiration. Inspiration gives a one the ability to extraordinarily motivate other people or persuade them to tell the truth. Okay, so this is going to be for our diplomacy option. And then we've got the Golden Feather, which increases strength, dexterity, but it lowers defense. These golden feathers come from the speedy golden loons who molt their feathers every spring. They can be found near every major lakeside. And it looks like the effect here is haste. A little haste makes any adventurer inhumanely fast. Great for reaching long distance locations and escaping every fight unharmed. So it looks like golden feather will be for our fight the wolf option. So let's go ahead and take a look at our drink recipes to see which, it, which recipe the infusions would match best best with. So we've either got the Charisma and Inspiration option with the Thunder Sage, or the Dexterity and Haste option with the Golden Feather. So we already know that Sunny Breeze is Fable's favorite drink and it has high dexterity. So we could go for Sunny Breeze if we wanted to go with the Dexterity option. Uh, Last Whisper also has high dexterity, so we could go with that. But checking the Infusion, okay, so that would be okay. It's not the, the golden feather does not lower it or anything like that. So if we wanna go with the fight the werewolf option, we can go last whisper or sunny breeze with the golden feather to include that haste. Uh, but for charisma, we would need something different. It's not the, not the sailor's courage, the steel tonic was defense. Ah, peaks the sunrise, it's got a lot of charisma there. Or we've got, yeah, Frost the Lagoon isn't going to do anything in this situation. So if we want to go with the Charisma and Inspiration Diplomacy option, we would go Peak Sunrise, but Fight the Werewolf, we could do Last Whisper or Sunny Breeze. Hmm. I am going to go for Last Whisper. We haven't made that drink yet. I'm interested to see what the fight option is going to be. So that's going to fulfill the dexterity requirement. And for haste, we are going to need to use this golden feather. So let's draw the recipe for Last Whisper. And then we have that little tip to add our infusions first. So it looks like the infusions were added to the top of the screen. Here we have got the Thunder Sage, which on the coaster you can see shows the inspiration ability with the two pluses on defense, but the negative on intellect. And the Golden Feather shows our haste ability with the plus on strength and dexterity, but the minus on defense. So we're gonna go ahead and drop the Golden Feather in here. And we can see that it's already filled up a little bit of this coaster on the left-hand side. So we just need to add a bit of dexterity and some strength. So we're going to start with our dexterity here. It needs to be filled all the way up. There we go. 
and then it looks like strength is already okay it only goes to the first point of the star and now we need to add a little bit of intellect which is this purple hourglass there we go last whisper that's exactly what we were going for so we're going to go ahead and send this over to fable and see what they say about it all right last whisper with a golden feather that tastes great well at least it tastes nice very brisk do you feel a little braver <laughs> not yet faster more agile okay swifter with my bow it was a high dexterity drink so that makes a lot of sense like I may become as fast as a lightning bolt. So let's see how this specific drink choice is going to influence the outcome of this werewolf quest that people decided to take. I'm sure that bravery will come later. You're welcome, Fable. Glad we could help <laughs> in heart palpitations. I wonder if that's from the drink or from the anxiety. <laughs> I think that's your anxiety. Agreed. We believe in you, Fable. You can do it. All right. Follow your heart instead. That's good. Good advice. Again. All right. We can't wait to hear all about your victory, Fable. All right. So Fable's off. I wonder if we're going to have any other patrons today. <gasps> Maybe they'll find some new ingredients for me. That would be exciting. I should make a quest for that sometime. Ooh, I wonder if that's uh, alluding to a feature in the full game. We can make quests to send adventurers out to find new ingredients to make new drinks. That would be a cool feature. Oh, and it's the end of the day. No other patrons for the day. Let's feed Andu, clean up the tavern, and again, we're going to call it a night. All right, so it's the next day, 59th of the week. So let's see what the 59th will bring us. Oh, we've got Lynn and Fable. Lynn, gruff as before. <laughs> I can fix this, uh-oh. Just let me pick up chamomile from my tree house. Ooh, I wonder what happens. Uh oh, we, Lynn did say she was going to the Ashen Grove. I wonder if something happened between Lynn and Fable's family. Let's let's move on and see how the story unfolds. Uh oh, did you say no? Uh oh, oh no. Did Fable think Lynn was the werewolf for the quest? Uh-oh. Oh, Fable looks so upset about this. How about we calm the spirits and you tell me what happened? I'm very interested to hear the story behind this tension. The misunderstanding. A very astute observation. The elf thought of me as an uncle dragon look-alike, so I, can't, I think I see where this is going. The uncle that looks like a werewolf. Yep. That's what I thought. Fable has mistaken Lynn for a werewolf. Oof. <laughs> And Fable's just over here denying it. Let's we'll see what Lynn has to say about this. Uh, let's watch it unfold further. Oh no. Let's hear all about it. Start from the beginning. So 
Babel went out to look for the werewolf in Tregaren, felt agile and ready and braver than they ever felt before. Great. Yep, it is the quest that you gave us, Lynn. Thanks for the reminder. Mm -hmm. All right, so it seems like they will went straight for this quest after they left the inn yesterday. Okay, one downside is idyllic sunsets. Yeah, that's what happens when the sun goes down. It gets dark. And every tall lumen person in the dark is automatically a werewolf? Fair point, there are plenty of tall people that are not werewolves. Ah, okay. So it seems Lynn was hunting some sheep. Oh, oh. There's always two sides to every story. The quest stated this is what the werewolf will be doing. Okay. I'm broke. Ah, I see where the confusion came from. Easy mistake to make, I suppose. Then you need not one but three arrows? That does sound like a little bit of overkill. Mm -hmm. So, stepped out of the shadows to take aim. I can't get myself to aim right for the heart. So good thing that Fable is a caring person that doesn't want to take the life of another living creature. So Lynn just has a shoulder injury, apparently. And suddenly the werewolf curses like a sailor. I wonder if that's a side effect of the drink that we gave Lynn earlier. Oh. Okay. What is that? Why is it censored? <laughs> Youth protection, the age rating assessment is quite harsh. Uh, I like that subtle little nod. I felt a piercing pain in my shoulder. Yep. Not once or twice, but three times. Man, Fable is quick with the bow, but they are a ranger, so I'm not surprised. Never been so happy to have missed. I don't think they will miss because they said they couldn't they couldn't bring themselves to aim for the heart. So they missed the heart, but their target was the shoulder in the first place. Hmm. Can't actually see anyone. I wonder if Fable was very cleverly hidden. I hear the bells of death ringing in my ears. Fable being a little bit dramatic again. Actual bells from the chapel. <laughs> yeah, Lynn, I can see how much Lynn cares about what Fable's name is. Crash right into a tree. Uh, was enough of a shock to their system to bring them back to the world of the visible. So Fable must have been using some sort of cloaking spell, probably, or maybe an invisibility spell, something to make it so Lynn couldn't see them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the rustling of leaves, cracks of branches, and high-pitched yelp. Oh, okay. I did. Okay. caught the attention of the actual culprit. Oh, so there was an actual werewolf involved in this tale. Mm, he must have been on his way to get another sheep. 
So it looks like the uh, scuffle between Fable and Lynn caught the attention of the actual werewolf that Fable was supposed to find. A deep blood-curdling growl. It sounded more like an empty stomach. I mean, they both growl. Hmm? Glowing red eyes, fangs as big as my hand. Probably around eight feet high. I wonder how much of this fable is embellishing. <laughs> Six feet at max. Lynn is here to bring the story back down to earth. Oh, I was sure that the Mary Morgan incident that would repeat. Mm -hmm we heard about earlier. Let's see. Sniff the air, his eyes lock of mine what happened. But then I remembered what you had told me. I'm assuming Fable is saying they remember what we, the NK, had told them. Werewolves love playing fetch. That was part of the quest information. So I swiftly slid down the tree and picked up the stick from the ground. And then throw the stick into the bushes as far away from me as possible. <laughs> okay, so that answers the question from earlier about whether or not the fetch tip from Lynn was coming from personal experience. It seems like it did because Lynn also was chasing the stick that the fable threw. Oh, okay, I noticed something odd on the werewolf. Okay, so this is not just any old werewolf, it seems. Flannel rags. Okay. okay. Game of fetch is forgotten at this point because of these flannel rags. Seared him right in the eye as I heard that. Okay. So Lynn has saved this werewolf from Fable's bow for the time being. Oh! This is what Lynn was afraid of. She thought this werewolf might be her uncle, and that's why she didn't want to take the quest on herself, but she got involved anyway. Darn uncle was in full werewolf transformation. Okay, interesting. Oh, so Lynn apparently had no idea. I was joking when I told you that story. And keep, I wouldn't have thought the werewolf was actually my uncle. Whoa, what a twist. But that is exactly why I don't do cases involving like All right, so now, how did Lynn deal with the uncle? Mm -hmm. Okay, confronted him, of course. Knocked some sense into him. Seems very in keeping with Lynn's character. Mm -hmm. I know wearing all those sailors not was good for something. The resolution was only half as exciting. Okay, so the uncle contracted lycanthropy at the annual family gathering. Okay. Got in a lot of fights and the uncle ran away. Wise, wise decision, Fable. Oh, so yeah, what happened to the uncle? Ah, Swamp Witch. Okay. Was the quest successful? 
I mean, the werewolf was taken care of and the villagers aren't in danger anymore, so I suppose that constitutes a success. The arrow itself isn't the problem. Uh, the, so Lynn doesn't really care about the pain, she's mad about her coat. How about a drink to celebrate? So what are we going to be making? Fable and Lynn today to celebrate the successful conclusion of Fable's first quest. So it looks like we're just mixing a drink for Lynn at the moment because Fable has to run home. All right. So what are we going to make for Lynn? Surprise me with something that fits my strength and brawn. So we're going to make another strength-based drink. So let's take a look back at the journal so we can take a look at our recipes. We want a strength drink. So we know Sailor's Courage has a lot of strength, as does mm, Frosted Lagoon has some strength. So Sailor's Courage is max strength. And then we've got Frosted Lagoon. But Lynn did say something that matches her brawn. And Frosted Lagoon ha does have some intellect attached to it. Let's take a look at our infusions really quick to just remind myself of what they do. All right, so we've got the golden feather, which is more strength, dex, but defense is down. Okay, I don't think either of those are gonna be applicable in this situation. So we already gave Lynn the Sailor's Courage. Frost of Lagoon does have a pretty good amount of strength, even though it has the intellect. Let's see what, let's see what the description says. Maybe that will influence my decision here. The Frosted Lagoon calms your nerves and strengthens your muscles. It's very popular amongst travelers from the Highlands and Deria and those looking for some extra UV protection. This version is actually a modified prototype from the capital, focusing heavily on intelligence. May or may not need some tweaking. Well, as a person that wears sunscreen every day, this would probably be my favorite drink. If I could drink my UV protection, I would really like that. But okay, so I'm a little thrown off because it's, uh, I think I'm just going to go with Sailor's Courage because we do have the three arrows up for strength. This is going to give us the max strength stats and Lynn specifically did say to match her strength and brawn. So I feel a little bit uh, nervous going for the Frost Lagoon. I think that high intelligence stat um, makes it the wrong drink for the situation. So we're just going to go Sailor's Courage again which means we need to get going with this red potion. One, two, three, there we go. And then we also need a little bit of Dex in the green bottle. And then we have to go for a splash of defense. There it is, Sailor's Courage. Thank you, Andrew. And let's send it through the void to Lynn. She liked it before, so hopefully this is the correct drink. This, okay, it is to her liking. There we go. I'm assuming Lynn is talking about Fable. Well, Fable is in here like every day. I think Fable's probably the inn's best customer. Or just a regular. Yes, Lynn. Okay, a little while later. Oh, we have some newcomers. What looks to be a vampire and a dwarf, both covered in slime. Okay. It is evening. I can see now that the moon is showing through the window. I didn't realize that there was any kind of day-night cycle, but it does appear that this window outside does show the time of day. Apparently the dwarf character is not a fan of innkeepers. These blabbers only have one mode and that's talking too much. 
might have had some bad experiences. Oh, another dialogue option. I have many modes to offer. Choose one, or I could easily talk more. We're going to go with that. We could talk more. Just no. Something my customers like to talk about. <laughs> oh, now the vampire would like to hear a poem. <laughs> it seems like the vampire and the dwarf know each other somehow. At least they entered together and they're both covered in what appears to be slime. I would like to know their backstory a little bit more. Are they a traveling party? <laughs> the vampire is very upset about the fact that we're not going to have poetry reciting. Where's my cape and now this? Uh oh. Maybe up for another quest? What hasn't happened to our cape? <laughs> it has lived a very sheltered life. So it seems like the cape is very important to this vampire character. Uh, so I wonder if we will be giving a quest for someone to find his cape. Perhaps the slime ate your cape. I mean, slimes do generally just kind of eat whatever, so it's a fair question. It is far too polite for that. Okay. I take, I take the vampire's word for it since the slime is on his shoulder. Sir Alphonse Luis Frederic Duquette de la Salle. Wow, that's quite an impressive name. Is there a shorter version of that? Kyle, how do, how do you get Kyle out of that? Kyle and so, Rhea, okay. Rhea Frostbreath. Oh, all right, I wonder if we're gonna get a rumor about Kyle's cape now. Oh, it's some sort of invisibility cape. Well, no wonder if you lost it. I'm sure an invisibility cape is really easy to lose. <laughs> I have? Yeah, I thought you came in here to ask us about your lost cape. I would see why he would want to keep this cape very close and take good care of it, though. It seems like a cape of invisibility is not an item that everyone would have. I must retrieve. Okay, we can. We could help you with that, Kyle. It's your player. Oh! Oh, we've reached the end of the demo! Already? It has been a pleasure. That was quite fun. I did enjoy the insight into the adventures to come. It ended too soon. So this looks like a photo of the dev team. If you would like to hear about their process behind developing Tavern Talk, make sure you check out the exclusive interview we have on the All Access Arcade blog. I'll leave a link in the description and thank you for watching. Happy gaming!